Hey, what's going on everybody? It is Rodney. I'm back again. I know it's been a while since I made a video, but I wanted to come back and make a frequently asked questions video about the top video on my channel. Okay. Um, up on your screen right now, I'm showing you the thumbnail of the top video on my channel right now. It has 2.6 million views showing you guys, giving you guys tips on how to buy a car the right way. And um, there are a lot of good questions on this video people left in the comments on this video. So I'm going to go over a few of the questions um, that I thought were interesting and most common. So that's what I'm going to do in this video. I'm going to run through them real quick. I think I have about, I don't know, 10 or so questions and comments. All right. So um, please give this video a like, share the video and leave a comment down below. I'd appreciate it. And also you can also ask questions underneath this video also. And by the way, the, the video that has 2.6 million views on it right now, I'm going to leave a link to it in the description box. Okay, you can also find it by going to my channel page and it's the video pinned to the top of the page. All right, so we're going to start off with these questions. All right. All right. At Henderson, excuse me, at Henderson 49 wrote, I hate buying cars. A guy tried to play me on my car as a trade asking how much I owe on it. That's none of your business. You'll give me what it's worth. Basically, basically, they want to pay it off and not give me the equity that I had. This I run into myself. I hate it. It's a dumb question that uh, dealers, salesmen sometimes ask. And, you know, they're kind of trying to, they think the, the, the customer is dumb. Basically, they don't need to know that information. You know what I mean? If you're going to trade in your car, they're supposed to give you what they think it's worth. It doesn't matter. You could owe $10 million on that car. They're still going to come to you with a number, right? So basically, he's right in this comment. They're just trying to figure out how much you owe on the car so that they can possibly just, you know, give you what you want to pay it off and, you know, get it out of the way. You don't have to give up that information. Tell them, I'm not going to give up that information and just tell me what it's worth, all right? All right, next. At Synthetic Soul 6, all right? I understand about paying off the loan. But what about the interest? Is that included with the payoff? <clears throat> That's where I'm confused at. Yes, when you get a payoff from your bank or whoever has a loan, that payoff pays off everything, including the interest, all right? Now, at Inquitius Reads, I wonder if dealers understand they'd make more sales if they weren't trying to scam people by charging a little extra. Now, using scam is a, is a Harsh word, I would say, but I completely understand. And I agree with what you're saying. Dealerships, um, I've noticed this myself because I'm a former car salesman. They worry about making so much gross on the car deal, beating you over the head, that they fail to realize that if you give them, if you give the customer a decent deal, they'll come back and buy more cars. They even, they'll even tell their friends to come to you. But a lot of dealerships and sales managers, they want to beat you over the head so bad and bury you with all these add-ons and not give you what, what you're trading is worth and make your car loan so unbearable that you're buried in it. And by the time you need a new car, you're so buried in your car loan, you can't come back. You can't go anywhere to buy a car. So they need to keep that in mind, I think, in my opinion, to um, maybe get more repeat customers and referrals. All right, now next. At Oh My So Sexy. Okay, what does at cost mean for the warranty? So if you watch the video, all right, I talked about getting a warranty at cost. Now, when I'm talking about, when I say that, I mean at cost is, see the dealership will, they have a warranty company that they buy the warranties from, and then they sell it to you at a markup. So basically you're just saying, I'll take a warranty, just give it to me for what you're paying for it. All right, um, at Jason M611, 611, can the dealer tell you what your interest rate is, and then say, if you put down 500 more, I can make your interest this much less from your finance company. All right, so yes and no. But if the guy tells you, you give me $500 more and I'll lower your interest rate, they're just playing games with you, all right? They're just playing games. That's a silly little game they play. Now, it, true, if you do put down more money, it's less risk for the bank, all right? But it has to be, it has to be significantly significant a significant amount more for them to make a big difference in the interest rate all right uh what else we got at at titlin 1222 
What are some points I can use to get the salesman to lower the MSRP? Um, some tips uh, when you're talking new cars or even used cars, right? Go at the end of the month uh, because a lot of times at the end of the month, you have the salesman who's trying to make sales quota so that he can get a bonus. And also the dealership wants to make a bonus when they sell a certain amount of new units every month, they'll also get a kickback from the manufacturer. So going at the end of the month and also finding out how long the vehicle has been sitting on the lot because they want to get rid of the oldest units first. That goes for new cars and pre-owned cars. So if you can find that out, um, that'll be good. I actually have a short uh, YouTube short on my channel showing how you can find out how long a new car has been sitting on the lot. So go check that out. All right. Uh, Patricia, 2007. They begged me to put money down for five hours straight, and I just kept saying no. They finally came back and said, you don't have to put anything down, and we got you the lowest monthly bill that we have offered all day. All right, now when it comes to monthly payments, I mean, excuse me, down payment, a lot of times you do not have to put down any money. The dealership and the salesman is going to ask and beg you multiple times to put money down. You do not always have to put money down, all right? Certain circumstances, if your credit is kind of beat up, you're going to have to put some money down and show some skin in the game to the bank, all right? But a lot of times, if you have average, decent credit, you don't have to put down a whole bunch of money. You don't have to put down any. So what I would do is when they ask for money down, I would say, no, I do not have any money down. And just keep saying, no, no, no. And then when they present you the numbers, your monthly payments, then you could take a step back and say, okay, I do have a few thousand dollars that I can put down. Then you present your money down and see how the deal changes. All right, that's what I would do. Uh, at Tressa five four five two eight, can I return the car after signing and putting down four thousand? Let me repeat, repeat that. Can I return the car after signing and putting down four thousand dollars cash, and the dealer still hasn't financed us? They say they lost the contract and need us to come in and sign a new and updated contract. I don't want the car at all. This is a really good one because I've seen this a lot of times in my day selling cars, all right? So what's happening here is a lot of times if your credit's kind of shaky and they're not sure if they can get you approved for a loan, what they'll do is if they feel they have a shot at getting you approved for the loan, instead of having you sit there all day and wait for a bank to come back with an approval, what they'll do is they'll tell you to take the car home, all right? They'll tell you to take the car home and they're hoping they got their fingers crossed that they can get the deal done at the at the rates and everything that you signed off on before you left all right now if that does not happen the dealership's going to call you back all right and they're going to say listen we need you to come back in to sign some new paperwork when you go back in to sign new paperwork that is probably nine times out of ten 99 percent it's going to be at a deal that's a little bit worse off for you than it was when you left from what you signed off on. So basically it's a whole new deal, all right? So technically you have not purchased that car yet because you didn't sign the official paperwork on it, all right? So you can bring the car back and then you have to fight to get your money back. See, now if they have your money, they're gonna hold that over your head and try and um, you know use that against you. But you did not sign the paperwork, the official paperwork on that vehicle, the loan paperwork, all right? So technically you don't own the car, so you can just bring that thing right back, all right? Next, at Amy Fryers 272 how can I find out if the dealer is upping the interest rate from what it actually is? Basically, ask them what the interest rate is, all right? Ask them what the interest rate is that they're getting from the bank. If you're going through, if, if you let the dealership run your credit, they're getting financing from another bank, okay? Um, if it's not their own, like Chrysler Financial or Nissan Motors or whatever it may be, all right? So basically, you can ask them, just say, listen, what's the buy rate, all right? The buy rate is the bank is the rate that they actually get from the uh, from the bank. All right, the buy rate. They're gonna be surprised that you even know what that is. All right, if you ask them that. All right. Next, at Geo Thompson five four five one. What if we don't have any trade-in value? Okay, so in the video that I'm referencing these questions from, I talk about what to do with your trade-in. All right. Now, if you don't have a trade-in for the scenario, you just don't have a trade-in. I mean, there's nothing you can do. You can still follow the instructions in the video, the advice I give, you just don't have a trade-in. Um, so you just go in with the same mindset as I tell you about when you're dealing with the overall car deal, you just don't have a trade-in, all right? 
All right, now this person at Raiden031, okay. So I don't buy into the BS that the order you bring up things matters. I think every time you share with them new information, they're going to reassess what they can do. So if you bring the price down, if you negotiate the price of the car down, they suddenly demand top dollar, then suddenly demand top, top dollar on a trade, they will simply not agree. And they end up, if they end up not profiting enough on the deal. The real way to win is to understand all the costs and how interest works and, and then have an overall cost you are willing to pay and be ready to walk if they can't agree to it. Now, I do agree with what he's saying here, he or she, right? If you do what I said in the video by bringing different aspects of the deal in at a certain time and the way I tell you to negotiate, you might get a salesman or a sales manager that says, oh, wait a minute, I can't, I can't do this deal at these numbers, all right? But the, what I'm telling you to do is, I'm giving you, when you follow the instructions in the video, I'm giving you the best shot at getting the deal, the best possible deal you can when you go in there, all right? So just follow the instructions in there. You might get some pushback on some of the stuff that I tell you to do, but it's worth it. It's better than going in there completely blind and not knowing what's going on, all right? Uh, and the last one here, at Yolanda Kaba 2930. Great advice. I never knew that. I need to trade in my car. How do I know for sure to get a good price on it? Basically, go to Kelly Blue Book. That's, that's going to be your guide as a consumer to find out what your car is worth as a trade-in. All right. Now, um, you want to get as close to that value as possible. And there's also, you'll see a trade-in value and you also see um, a value that shows you what, you what you would be able to get for to sell the car for on the street if you would sell it yourself. You want to get as close to those numbers as possible. Now, keep in mind that the dealerships have a different book that they're looking at for used car values all right so what they're going to do is when they they're going to look at your car and if it's a car they're going to make a decision is this car something that we're going to put on our lot and resell or is it something that's kind of older it doesn't fit in with our inventory it's old and we're going to try and sell this car off to the dealer auction all right the auction the dealer auction is the auction that dealers go to we cannot go to as consumers all right so they're going to look at your car and they're going to decide what, the, what they're going to do with it if it's a wholesale car that they're gonna to send to the auction, they have a computer system that they look at where they can type in what your car is, all the information on your car, and see exactly what other car dealerships are paying for this car at the auction. And they're gonna give you a price based off of that, that they're still gonna profit off of, even if it's just 500 bucks, they still wanna make a, a, a deal on it. But to get back to your question, um, just use Kelly Blue Book as a guide, all right? And that's about it for the questions I'm going to go over in this video. All right, so please share this video and also make sure you go back and watch the video that I'm referencing. All right, with all the questions and leave questions down below, comments, give it a like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see y'all next time.